Hello, boys and girls. This is Mr. Jimini. Sorry I can't make the first period today. I need to go and talk with my daughter's teacher. You know how full of joy I am, so can you only imagine me in a parent-teacher conference when I'm actually the parent? So lucky you're in class and not a little fly in the wall listening to that conversation. I'm not going to spend much time. I just wanted to, I kind of like to make a video while I'm, when I'm absent, which doesn't occur much, but it helps me keep in touch with you guys. You hear a familiar voice, and I can still bust your chops from a video. So, Tommy, pay attention. Looking at this lesson 4.9, I'm not going to actually be assigning lesson 4.9. I just want to model it for you. So, lesson 4.9, estimating with fractions. This is a very, you know, it, it really, to me, estimating with fractions helps me get a better idea of if my answer when I'm adding fractions makes sense. So I'm going to do a couple on this. Now, Stephen, pay attention. I am watching you. No playing around. Notice my tumor right there on my forehead. I don't know what that is, like a growth. Anyways, let's take a look at number five. So I'm going to rewrite it down here. I have eight. Oh, let's not use that color, though. Not that I don't like purple, but let's go with eight fifteenths plus 7 tenths. Now, when I'm estimating with fractions, I think of a 1, a half, or really a 0. And I could think of 3 quarters or 1 quarter as well. Well, 8 fifteenths. I know half 15 is, is 7 and a half. So 8 is just a little bit more than half. So I'm just going to call 8 and a half, or 8, eight fifteenths, 1 half. And now 7 tenths is 70%. And I really think that is three-fourths. So I can think of this as three-fourths. Now, I don't have a common denominator, but one-half is also the same as two-fourths. So if I were to add, if I were to estimate what eight-fifteenths plus seven-tenths is, I really have five-fourths, which, again, was if I wanted to not simplify it but convert it to a mixed number, it would be one and one-fourth. So this is really the same as, I would say, five-fourths. Again, I am looking at the problem, trying to get an idea of if it's closer to one, closer to three fourths, closer to a half, closer to maybe one fourth, or closer to zero. Right, let's take a look at another one. I'm going to have you model one. Now, again, this would be a great idea to write these in your notebooks. Title lesson, lesson four nine, estimating with fractions. That should be kind of self explanatory, but since this is the first time you've ever listened to me talk you through a lesson with not actually physically being there, it's a little tough. Uh, let's go to a tougher one. Let's go like number seven. So I'll write it down here, 4 and 5 sixteenths plus 2 and 9 tenths. Now, looking at this problem, obviously we have four holes. That's not argue. We can't argue that. 5 sixteenths. Hmm. And I'm looking at the denominator 16. Well, what goes really nice in a 16? Well, 4 goes nice in a 16. 2 goes nice in 16. 8 goes nice in 16. Well, the, the closest thing to 5 is to is 4. So if I were to make this 4 and 4 sixteenths, that's really the same as 4 and 1 fourth. I just simplified this. Now I'm going to add that to 2 and 9 tenths. Uh, Collins, 2 and 9 tenths. We know the 2 is here, but 9 tenths. Is that close to being 1 whole? Is it close to being 3 quarters, a half, 1 fourth, and 0? So what do you think, Collins? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Nine and two and nine tenths. Nine tenths is that closer to being one hole? I'm sorry. Oh, did you say one hole? Uh, excellent. So that's the same as one hole. So I really have two plus one hole. So I really have three. So if I think about this, I really have seven and one fourth or one quarter. If I were to estimate this. Okay. Let's do another one here. Actually, why don't you guys try one on your own? So, Mrs. Bianco, I believe you're in the room right now. So, before, I'm going to tell them to do a problem. I want you to pause the video and, and have them attempt that problem. So, why don't you guys try, let's see here. Let's try number 11. Go ahead and try number 11. So, Ms. Bianco, pause it and go ahead and work together. And then maybe work with a colleague real quick once you get an answer. And we'll resume it in about uh, a minute. All right, good luck. Now, I'm thinking 7 tenths. Let me write it, 7 tenths. Minus four sevenths. Well, seven tenths is really close to se it's seventy percent, which is the same as well. Seventy percent is close to seventy-five percent. That's three fourths. 
Now, I know that half of seven is three and a half, so this is close to being one half, it's a little over one half. Now, I want a common denominator, so three fourths, I have the fourths. I'll put the fourths here. Uh, let's see here, we have, what's half of four? Oh, two. But remember, this is a subtraction one. We've done a couple addition ones, now we have a subtraction one. So three fourths minus two fourths, that gives me one fourth. All right, hope that helps with estimating with fractions. Now let's parlay that into adding and subtracting fractions. Now, the top of the handout really has with fraction with like denominators. I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about stuff like 7 eighths minus 2 fifths. Now I'm looking for an exact answer and not a rounded answer. So first thing I do is I always look at the denominators. They need to be common. Well, obviously these two are not common. A couple of different things you can do here. If you're really good with your multiplication, like I am, which is one of the few things I'm good at, I will say to myself, what's the greatest, the least common multiple of 8 and 5? And I know automatically it is 40. So put a 40 here, a 40 here. I ask myself, what did I multiply 8 by to get 40? It is times by 5. Whatever I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. 7 times 5 is 35. Very good, Doug. What do I do to 5, or what do I multiply 5 by to get 40? Well, it's times by 8. Whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So my fashion designer, Strudel, what's 2 times 8? I heard you, 16. Nice job, my man. All right, now the operation here is subtraction. I have 35 minus 16. I'm going to say that's 19, and I have 19 fortieths. Now let's make sure we cannot simplify that. 19 is a prime number, so the only way it can go into anything is if 19 goes into 40, which is not. So there's my final answer, 19 fortieths. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Let's go with number, how about number 17? Number 17, I have 5 sixths and 11 fifteenths. Now, I always like to focus on the one with the larger, with the larger denominator. And in this case, that would be the 15. So I have 5 sixths plus 11 fifteenths. And I always like to go by the multiples of that larger denominator. Well, the first multiple of 15 is 15. 6 is not going to go into 15. But the next multiple of 15 is 30, and 6 does go into 30. So my common denominator, my least common multiple, is 30. What did I multiply 6 by to get 30? Times it by 5. Excellent. 5 times 5, Logan? 25. Very good, Logan. Nice job. Okay, what do I multiply 15 by to get 30? Multiply it by 2. Farini, what is 11 times 2? I know you already say this in your head. 22. Good job, kiddo. Now let's just add them. 22 plus 25, that gives me, I think, 47. We have 47 thirtieths. That cannot be simplified. If you want to convert it into a mixed number, you can. It's not required because this can't be simplified. So we have 47 thirtieths. Okay, I want you guys to take a look at the next one. It is 3 fourths minus 8 fifteenths. I want you to do that one on your own. All right, Mrs. Bianco, please pause the video this time. And then once they have some opportunity to do it, restart the video back up. Hit pause now. Okay, welcome back to the Mr. Jimini Show. We have 3 fourths minus 8 fifteenths. Eesh, what is the least common multiple for these two? I always look at the bigger denominator, the larger one. Okay, I'm going to count by the multiples of 15. First multiple of 15 is 15. 4 is not a factor of 15. Let's move on. 30. 4 is not a factor of 30. Let's move on. 45. 4 is not a factor of 45. Let's move on. 60. Winner, winner. So I think. Doesn't? Yeah, it is. So we go 60 here. 60 here. Okay, now this might take some thought. What do I multiply 4 by to get 60? Steroid, you're looking pretty big today. What do I multiply 4 by to get 60? What do I multiply 4 by to get 60? Did you just say 15, Reg? You are right, my man. 15 times 3 is 45. Okay, Harry, tennis is a dodgeball, and you're throwing it at Tommy. What times 15 gives me 60? You know times I put his head in front of the ball, so you get out. So what times 15 gives me 60? Did you just say 4? Excellent. 8 times 4 is 32. I subtract. I have, what is that, 13 60th, that is simplified, so there we go. Now be careful, sometimes you might get a negative fraction depending on which one's larger. Okay, you guys have, for a quick check, 
So Mrs. Bianca, they're going to get a little piece of scrap paper there from the bin there on the basket. And I would like them to solve those two questions for a little quick check. I'll make it a little bigger so we can see it. So you have these two story problems to solve a quick check. Please make sure your name's on it. I will grade it myself. No need to worry about that. And then you can start on your evening practice. Evening practice for the weekend is lesson 410 practice C. Just numbers 10 through 20. And then you also have uh, 410 problem solving. I will be here during recess, guys. Feel free to stop in. Say hi to me. All right. Take care. Uh, good talking with you. Bye.